Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. We're here in Corona, California with Shane Nicholas, and we're inside the Fender Amps factory checking out how you guys put together your uh, U.S.-made amps. And what are we looking at right now? This is the beginning of the process, right? Yeah, this is the beginning of our hand-wired amp line here. We have uh, hand wiring on a eyelet board, which is very similar to the way these amps were made back in the 50s and 60s when Leo Fender had the company. Uh, as you can see, it's a very time-consuming process, uh, and of course, you know, it costs more to the customer to be able to buy an amp made this way, but a lot of people still feel that Leo Fender's way was the best way to make an amplifier, so for our higher-end product, we still do that here at Fender. And uh, what's she working on right now? Uh, she's working on a Eric Clapton Vibro Champ circuit board. This amplifier is going to be launched in a couple weeks in October. Uh, it's basically a 57 champ with tremolo and power attenuator added. Uh, but again, you know, the, the heritage, the bones of this amp are very much 1957. Once the uh, fiber board, uh, circuit board is stamped with the eyelets, then it's going to be hand wired with pre-cut wire sets. Uh, in order to uh, improve consistency, we have all the different lengths of wire are cut ahead of time. Uh, so the builder can just put everything in at the right place and it's all the, the, the right length. Here we have a completed circuit board for the new EC Tremolux amp. Uh, the only thing in here that would be uh, non-Leo Fender would be some of the markings on the board, uh, which helps with service later on. And here we also have a bias pot, which uh, the artist decided to uh, add that uh, to the 57 Deluxe type platform which didn't have this. So once they get, uh, she gets the circuit board done over there, it's going to come over here where it gets put in the chassis, right? Can you talk a little bit about what happens next? Uh, we get the chassis back from the plater and of course it has, uh, in this case, Eric Clapton's signature and the, the volume and tone control markings and everything silk screened on the panel. And then we have the assembler is doing the mechanical part of the assembly which is putting in tube sockets, transformers and ultimately we're going to have the circuit board uh, put in there as well. Okay, here we have soldering in the tube sockets and other components that aren't on the board. So we had a preloaded uh, uh, fiber circuit board going in here and now we're going to do all the other parts by hand. Sockets, transformers, uh, pots, etc. are all going to be hand soldered. So here at the end of the chassis assembly uh, we're wiring the jacks, the switches, the pilot light, and then ultimately putting the knobs on at the end where it's a completed chassis. Also, all of our product is made in uh, all the voltages needed for around the world. So here I have a 120 volt chassis and a European chassis uh, right next door to each other. So here we have an empty cabinet that comes from our wood shop and it's got all the parts pre-cut with lacquered tweed on it ready to go and we're gonna move over to final assembly where the guys are putting in the speakers and everything one of the funny things I've noticed whenever I come here is the very uh, uh, precise handwork is predominantly done by women who have more patience and smaller hands the bigger jobs putting 12 and 15 inch speakers in a cabinet that's done by the guys so one of the last things that happens is that the chassis goes into the cabinet and we put the logos on. In this case, we're putting a VibroChamp logo on the new EC VibroChamp cabinet. It's good old fashioned hammer and nail. Yeah, hammer and nails. I'm putting the EC logo on there as well. It's very exciting. So then it looks like we've got a completed amp. What happens next? Okay, well now uh, our uh, test guy Dave is in here. He takes every amp uh, and plugs it in. We can plug in all the different voltages for, uh, depending on what country this is going to go to. This is a European one. This happens to be a European unit. He's going to turn it on make sure everything works. What I'm doing right now is um, checking the high pot, which is uh, basically checks the ground, uh, 
for each unit. So make sure no one gets blown up when it turns on or anything. <laughs> so then afterwards, I put this pass sticker because it passed right now. And I do just put it right there in the label. I usually put it in the speaker because it's units, so my hand can't really get into it. And I don't want to ruin the tubes or anything. So then when I'm done with that, I plug it in. It's a 230 European. Since the unit's a little bit smaller, most units I wait about one and a half, two minutes just to warm up the tubes. Uh, this guy takes about maybe like 15, 20 seconds just to warm up because it's such a little amp. And then from now, from here, just because it's such a assembly line, we go through a lot. Uh, we test it through music. It looks good. I mean, it sounds good. Also, I mean, while I went into heat up on some of the bigger amps, I kind of see if there's anything missing, any screws, uh, any labels missing, anything messed up with the cabinet itself. And just, just I mean, I, I know this is good already as it is, just because it's such a smaller unit. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com. Hope you enjoyed it.